Hey guys, it's Lauren with Discover Double Bass, and today I wanted to talk about how to learn or how to get better at vibrato. Now, if you've never done vibrato before, the motion that you do can be kind of tricky to get used to at first, so I'm going to break it down to the very basic motion that you're going to be doing and also give you the exercise that I used when I was first learning vibrato. So let's first talk about the very basic motion that you do when you do vibrato. What I usually do is a kind of turning the doorknob sort of motion. So if you can put your hand up in the air like this, like you're holding a Coke can, and then just imagine a doorknob in the palm of your hand, and you can twist it back and forth like you're jiggling the doorknob and patiently trying to get into a room. So now let's transfer that to the fingerboard. Put your second finger in first position on the fingerboard, and make sure that your finger is planted and your thumb is planted on the back of the neck like this. And when you do that doorknob kind of motion, it's the same thing, but you can't rotate as far because you've got the fingerboard in the way. And you wanna make sure you're doing a very vertical motion, okay? You're sort of aiming down towards the floor following the line of the string. So when you go down, you should feel the back of your hand hit the fingerboard. And then when you go up, you should hear, feel the side of your index finger, that part of your hand, hit the fingerboard. It's a very exaggerated motion that I'm teaching you right now. So down, up, down, up. Another thing to keep in mind is that the motion is coming from the forearm. Okay, so you're not moving your finger by itself like this, and you're not distorting your wrist. It's coming from the forearm, and your forearm, your wrist, and your hand should be one unit. So you should be moving them all as one, like this. You're rotating your forearm. And then it's the same thing with first finger. So if you put your first finger down on the fingerboard, rotate your forearm down towards the floor in that doorknob motion. So now with fourth finger, fourth finger is gonna be a little bit different. Because that finger is not as strong and because of where it's located on the hand, I find that I really can't do the doorknob motion very well. So what I do instead is more of an up and down kind of motion. So I plant my third and my fourth finger down for this, just for a little bit added strength. And I do this up and down motion, kind of like a hand shaking motion, like I'm shaking somebody's hand with my left hand for some reason, in a really awkward grip like this. But still, the motion is all coming from the forearm. You're moving everything all together as one. So now let's get into thumb position. The motion in thumb position is basically the same, but there are a couple things that change. So the first thing, when you get up here, your thumb is obviously going to be on the fingerboard. So you're still going to do that doorknob twisting kind of motion where you're rotating your forearm but you can't go as far because your thumb is here, right? So you're mostly gonna feel it on the tip of your fingers rather than in the palm of your hand, which is where I feel it in the lower positions. Another thing, it's not as vertical as it is in the lower positions. In the lower positions, right, you're going straight down vertically, but because of the way that your hand is shaped in thumb position, you're actually gonna do diagonally outward. So if you think about going about 45 degrees away from the string. And so with second finger, it's the same thing. And third finger, same kind of deal. Okay, now let's talk about thumb vibrato because that is quite different than anything else. The way that you do thumb vibrato is you plant your thumb down on the fingerboard and I like to move my hand with my forearm, right, up and down and that sort of makes my thumb rotate like this and gives a nice really wide Vibrato. Now, thumb vibrato is exceptionally difficult to get used to, but if you just treat it differently and practice it this way, like you're rotating or rolling, then I think you'll get used to it. So let's do an exercise now to help you solidify that vibrato motion. You do need a metronome for this exercise, so if you don't have one out, go ahead and get it out and put it on 60. And let's say 60 is a quarter note. What we're going to do is we're gonna do that vibrato motion that I showed you in the last section, and we're gonna do it along to the beat. So up and down and up and down. And when you add the bow, you're gonna hold the bow for, let's say, two beats. So half note this way and then half note this way. You should be able to hear a distinct difference in the pitch when you go down and up, okay? So let's do that now. Um. 
so you can hear a big difference between the upward motion and the downward motion. So now, once you get used to that, let's do eighth notes. <laughs> You want to make sure that you're always moving in this exaggerated kind of motion so your hand is hitting the fingerboard down and then hitting the fingerboard again when you go back up. Now let's do triplets. Now sixteenths. Okay, so I would do this on every single finger. It's the same thing for first and for fourth. And when you're doing this, obviously, like I said, it's an exaggerated motion. This is not necessarily going to be the motion that you're going to do when you're doing free vibrato. But a lot of times when people do vibrato, it's so thin that it's hard to hear. So it's really a lot more beneficial to practice doing it exaggerated and then reining it in rather than trying to make more of it when you've already gotten used to doing a very thin sort of motion. So now let's do that same thing but in thumb position. So let's do first finger this time and let's do quarter notes first. Now eighths. Now triplets. When you practice this, I would maybe make sure that nobody else is home just because this is not a very pleasant thing to listen to if you're doing it correctly. If you're not doing it correctly, then it just kind of sounds a little wobbly. But you should, like I said, be able to hear that big difference in pitch as you go down and then back up. Okay, so I would practice this a few minutes every single day on every rhythm. So a couple minutes on quarter notes on first finger, and then on second finger, third finger, and then move to eighth notes on all of those fingers, then do the lower positions, then go up to triplets, so on and so forth. So once you get more comfortable with that basic vibrato motion, you can be a little bit more creative with how you use it. Vibrato is great because it adds texture to a note and you're able to express a whole range of emotions that you might not have been able to convey otherwise. If you want something to be really emotional, really heavy, really dramatic, you can do a wide, medium tempo vibrato. I like to do this in places like the end of the foray elegy where it's really dramatic. I think it conveys a sense of heaviness that I really can't get with just the bow or with the dynamics. If you want something to be a little bit more tense and just as dramatic, but maybe a little bit more uh, forward pressing, you can speed up the tempo. Keep that width, but speed up the actual motion to create that sense of urgency. If you want something a little bit lighter, you can um, Keep that speed that we just did, but also make it a little bit thinner. I think with the right bow stroke, that can sound really, really nice. You can also wait to start the vibrato. You don't have to start it right at the beginning of the note. I do that a lot, where I finish a run with a long note, and I just wait to let the vibrato sink in. It sort of creates a little bit of tension, and it can also create a little bit of a crescendo, or help you if you're trying to do a crescendo anyway. Um, but you can also use vibrato as an accent at the beginning of the note. If you just give it a little punch at the beginning, you don't even have to do anything with the bow. There, I didn't even do anything. I didn't dig in at all. That was all with the vibrato motion. So figure out what kind of vibrato you like to do best. Use that exercise to get the motion down, but then be creative with it. Ultimately, vibrato is a creative choice, and you should have fun with it. So I hope that this lesson helped with your vibrato. I hope you learn to love it just as much as I do. If you enjoyed this lesson and you would like to learn more or take more lessons with me, please check out my full-length bowling course available exclusively on discoverdoublebass.com. And if you have any questions over this or anything else, please leave a comment underneath the video and I will answer your question as soon as I possibly can. See you next time.